Today we're talking to Bob Bush Sr. Bob Bush is a uh, guy from central Pennsylvania. He has a number of trail cams located in locations in central Pennsylvania. And every few days, he, every few weeks or week or so, he posts new videos that he's taken of uh, all kinds of wildlife. What are some of the kinds of wildlife you've seen, Bob? I get everything from, you know, mice, chipmunks, squirrels, mink, weasels, uh, fishers, bobcats, bear, coyotes, owls, all different species of owls. I've got bald eagles, great blue heron, deer, just about everything. Have you gotten any like Bigfoots or any aliens in your web cameras yet? Not yet. But when I first started, when I was up on the mountain and I just did photos, there definitely was some strange lights in the middle of the night where there was no roads. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, how many cameras are you running right now? Oh, I think about eight right now. And what kind of cameras are you using? Uh, the last few years, I've been using Browning Special Ops series. Uh, it goes from Special Ops Advantage, Extreme, um, Edge. There's just every year they just put a different name to it. It's a no glow camera, which means no flash. So you can't see it. Animals can't see it. What do you think are your... Uh most interesting films you've managed to catch of wildlife? Well, I, I, I flushed a grouse from a nest accidentally one time and I was right there and I had a camera and I just put it on the tree and aimed it down and I didn't go back for, uh, for till I knew that they were, it would have been hatched. And that was a, a, a good moment. Grouse are tough. I finally got a grouse drumming on a log. Got some good series of that. We had a question from the audience members. It says, I know he's had animals take smelfies, but has he had one eat a camera or try to eat a camera? Well, I had a bear one year. It was the, the uh, brand new camera. I just put it up and you know, went back two weeks later. And you could tell something had gotten into it, and a bear had actually fit right into it. And its tooth mark was right right into it. I just, camera still worked for a couple of years, but yeah. And I've had bear. Bear are usually the ones that uh, mess with it. Although I do have a new video I just did. I actually did two videos, but I did one I think we're going to play. And it has a coyote that's like licking and chewing on the camera. So it's a never never been seen yet. So, <clears throat> well, so everyone else here knows. Uh, Bob and I did a video together, the basics of wildlife trail cameras with Robert Bush Senior, and it was up on Amazon for a while for sale as DVDs and a streaming platform. But when Amazon decided to stop their uh, DVD production, uh, we took it down and put it on YouTube. We're gonna play that video right after this session. So hang in there and you get, can see Bob tell us all about how he got started in this uh, wildlife trail camera stuff. Uh, you were telling me the other day that you were uh, involved with placing some cameras with the Game Commission. Did you tell me something about that? Actually it's with uh, DCNR. Uh, of okay. Black, Black and Shannon State Park. Um, yeah, they were doing some, and uh, I, I think the biggest problem is uh, cameras that were donated weren't the greatest of quality, and they weren't catching a whole lot of images. And so I just started that project. I'm excited about it. I grew up out of Black and Shannon since I was a kid. You know, it's just a local place here. It's a unique uh, habitat, that's for sure. So, but I already got a fisher on it. First week, I just checked the camera and had a fisher in the daytime. And they posted it. I'm going to be editing for them from now on in the future on the stuff. Um, so, 
You go there and look at some of the videos I'm putting on there too. And what channel is that? Uh, Black Michigan State Park on their uh, Facebook page, actually. Okay. And you have both a Facebook page and a YouTube channel. Yes, I have a, a YouTube channel also. Um, that's Bob's Pennsylvania Wildlife Camera. Facebook is Bush, one or the other. <laughs> I can't even remember right now. One's Bob's but, Pennsylvania Wildlife Camera. The other one's Bush's Pennsylvania right. Wildlife Camera. So yeah. he, he gave them different names just to confuse himself, I guess. That's right. And it works. Um, how did you get started doing these wildlife cameras? Uh, just, I always loved being in the woods. And uh, um, I always used to work for my father, you know, growing up, he landscapes. And then I went and did uh, HVAC stuff. And, you know, you start going on your life and you spend less and less time. So, it was something we decided to do is hike every Sunday. Video comes up. Hike every Sunday, and then uh, we started putting up trail cameras. So mm -hmm. it was it was something to start off with my father and my sister and mother live in Maine. I was I wanted them to be able to see what we were seeing. They were well, the whole family was you know was born in Pennsylvania and and, and enjoy the wildlife. I know uh, last year you got yourself a GoPro and you posted some uh, walking in the woods videos. Yeah. Tell me something about your walking in the woods videos. Well, it's, it's same thing. It's, it's for, I just, for people that can't get out in the woods anymore. Um, people that live in the cities that don't get out, uh, elderly people. Um, you said you had a... Uh, So the, the GoPro, the walk in the woods with Bob, I, I did it. You know, I'll I'll take a springtime, a summertime, a fall, and a winter time, uh, just and then you know cut it down to, to where it doesn't take too long. But people really, uh, it's gone over really good. People really have, have put some nice comments on. You had a video you wanted to play. Click on the share screen button at the bottom, and a couple uh, windows will pop up. There you go. And you click on it? the click on the window with the video playing. There you go. Can you see it? Yep, we can see it. You got it, Bob. Well, this is a good. This is a brand new one. Um, but I like how this deer came up behind it. When did you get this video? Today. Today, that's pretty new then. Yeah, I just collected this today and did the, did this, edited this. That's a fisher. That's 
Okay. Really glowing eyes, right? <laughs> yeah. Yep. All right, you're back to yourself again. Uh, okay. Does anyone have any questions for Bob? I have a question. Um, sure. Bob, do you actually see any of these animals in the light of day or is really the camera revealed like the just vast number of animals you get on your property? Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen them hiking in there. I've seen coyotes. I've seen fisher. Uh, you know, the, the docks, I'm always running into the docks. Um, yeah, the deer. I, I, I haven't... Uh, well, I shouldn't say I have. I, I have seen bear years ago with my dad. Um, we ran into a, a bear when we were out there. It was actually at a distance where we saw it, but it was right where I had a camera place. And I actually got it on camera too. But again, that was back when I did photos, not videos. So Neat. yes, I did. Great. So when are fishers out and about generally? Usually at night, but they're out in the daytime there too. You know, they're, they're opportunist. They're out, out and about. Mm, neat. I love but seeing the bobcats. <laughs> yeah, the bobcats. I, I haven't ran into a bobcat out there, although I ran in up in Quihanna area. I've uh, seen baby bobcats, uh, little kittens. Um, but I always worry about the mother bears with cubs this time of year. You never know. That's understandable. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Bob, where is your webcam? Where is your wildlife cameras located? Uh, so generally you said they're in a wildlife management area five. No, 4D. Wildlife management unit 4D. 4D. Okay. Which is a, a big area, but that's all I'll tell anybody. It's like Nobody knows, needs to know the exact location. Um, I, uh, I'm, I'm, my group isn't about hunting or anti-hunting. It's just about the wildlife. So, You were talking at one time about getting up somewhere near Benazette to try to capture pictures of some of the elk. Have you ever managed to get up that way with one of your no, cameras? I, not yet. Not yet. My son lives up that way. You know, he's up close to St. Mary's between Benfield and St. Mary's. And I still have, you know, obviously with the uh, COVID shutdown, um, since we talked about that, I, we haven't really done anything yet. Um, I'm just right in right now starting this Black and Shannon project is going to take up a lot of time uh, and keeping the log and those videos. Going. I have a question. Sure. Uh, where are some of the places, like I know people from all over the world have uh, looked at your videos and uh, how many countries are you up to now? Last I counted, it was over a hundred countries um, everywhere. Yeah, I get a lot of people, a lot of comments from people in Australia uh, and over in England and Scotland, France, I mean, you know, there, there's just people everywhere. Uh, Brazil, uh, Chile. I, I get people that send messages and comment on the videos from all over the place. So, yep, lots of, lots of countries, uh, a lot from Canada. Majority of everybody's in the U.S., but there's, there's definitely people everywhere. Okay, I have a question, too. Um, I'm always amazed by the different locations of you put your cameras and you get these amazing shots of all different animals. The latest one was the porcupine. Dan, what kinds of things do you look for 
when you're going to set up a camera that's going to make a good spot? You have a good eye. Well, like what kinds of signs you look for? Well, yesterday when I was out of Black Shannon, I, I recovered the one camera's SD card. And that was a, a no brainer. There was a log across a, tr a stream. Um, it wasn't a very big stream, but things like, you know, what? A log in the middle of the woods is a good place just laying down because animals like to walk on it. I've personally seen a bear just get up on a log that's already totally on the ground, no water around, and just walk down. It's just something wildlife seems to like to do. Um, so I also went out to a brand new area yesterday out at Black Machine, and I was just hiking. I just I just walk until I see... One thing is trails. Um, I'll, I'll get find a game trail and just walk until I see a convergence, maybe two or three trails coming together in one area. And I, I like this spot. There was water by it. Animals all need water. So water is always a, a good place for cameras. But this had everything, multi-trails and the water. Um, I set the camera up and what I finished walking on the trail right by it walking into it looks like bear tracks coming down so hopefully that's another good spot that, that we get some wildlife so it, stuff like that you know it's just uh uh ridge lines on on a hillside animals tend to walk deer walk on that they can look down they, they feel safer and uh Coyotes and animals like that, they walk ridge lines also looking for, for prey. But that's like the ridge log where I have the grouse drumming. And I just put the camera on there and, and knew there was trails around there. And it was on just basically on a ridge line. We have everything from fishers to mink, weasel, bear, grouse drumming. So that's, that's just something I grew up with. Dad taught me how. Um, you know, just being outdoors with my granddad and Uncle Danny up in Maine. Awesome. Yep. Well, I'm always amazed by your shots. What's that? I said I'm just always amazed by your locations and oh. what you get in the different yep. sites, and it's you just have a great eye for that. Well, thank you. Is there like a community of people who, uh, other people who do wildlife cameras, you like talk to each other. And, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Tell, tell, tell me about the wildlife uh, uh, trail camera community and some of the other oh. other people yeah. you follow or talk to. I mean, there's there's definitely some great ones out there. Sally Nassar, um, CR Wildlife Cameras is, is her page, CR Wildlife Cameras. They're, uh, she's up in Massachusetts. She gets some awesome videos. Um, um, and then there's individual people that just just do it. it. It's just amazing the amount of people. There's, and I don't remember his whole name, guy out in uh, California that, that has them. You know, it, it's, it's easy to find on Facebook. There's all kinds of different groups just searching for trail camera. Um, and you'll get some groups that, you know, they'll have hunting videos because that's part of trail cameras. And, you know, they'll have a description at the beginning. If you don't want to see that, you got to read the description and know that you're going to see it. If it doesn't bother you, then, it, you know, join. If not, just don't join it. I have a, you know, right on my description of my group is I'm not anti-hunting. I'm not against hunting. I just, we don't talk about it. It's, it's just about enjoying the wildlife. There's no politics. Um, I don't take any crap. I'll give somebody a warning. Some times people accidentally bring back a memory and I say that they would say they remember hunting da 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 or something and I'll take it out and send them a message and they'll apologize. Usually it doesn't happen again. I've only had to ban, I think, two people from the group. Um, one on each side. One was totally anti-hunting and the other guy was a hunter and they both, everybody thought, you know, my roles didn't count, but that's how it is. How many people are in your Facebook group? Do you know? I think it's over 51,000 people in the Facebook group. And over 10,000 something subscribers on YouTube. 
I think it might be 12,000 now, 12,000 something on YouTube. That's quite a few people. Um, come on, people, some more questions for Bob. I've got him here in the crosshairs, and, and you're not asking any questions. Of him. Can we see more video footage? I don't know find one. I'd love to see the porcupine one, if you can pull that up. Well, I do have that. I got a new computer. <laughs> so everything, I'm trying to... Navigate. I can put it up for you, Bob. I've got that one. So you got it? Good. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. So, now I've got to find it again. As soon as I say that, then I just place everything. Oh, Here's no. a perfect fine dead one. I have a question. I raised my hand, but I didn't. That's what I usually do with normal. Whoops. Later. Okay. Yeah. Well, we don't want to forget your question. I just had a request for this video, so I put them up. He doesn't seem very energetic, Bob. No, he's not. <laughs> That's why I added it to just the few things that he did. We're not back down too good here. I, I got my video ready. Now that's the same one. That's different. That's not the one I'm looking for. Well, this is the one you posted a couple days ago on YouTube. Ah, there it is. Oh, yeah. No, I, and I had 400 something videos of this porcupine. <laughs> so this is the best active clips that I could cut it down to. I actually posted a porcupine video myself a couple of weeks ago. I didn't take the video, but I put my GoPro on a friend of mine's helmet as they went into a cave in Western Pennsylvania. And there's a court kind of head down the passage in front of them. He look, he yawns a lot too. I'm not he or she yawns a lot. I've known about this porcupine den for, like I said, a long time. Um, but this is the first time I put a video camera on it. I actually took it down today. So are they nocturnal? I mean, obviously this is daytime and it's out, but. It's out, but it's just sleeping. When it's sitting there <laughs> like that, it's just, it's pretty much <laughs> sleeping, it seems. It doesn't, it only goes into the hole and back in there, it seems, as a protective. You'll see him just stick his head in and then okay. nothing can really get anything out. Okay. Uh, the only natural predator really is a fisher. Um, I mean, which is supposedly why the game commission reintroduced them to the to the woods. That's interesting. All right, someone had a question just as we went off there. Who had the question? They said they had their hand up. Oh, right there. 
Catherine. Yeah, call me Kathy. Um, yeah. <laughs> I've been curious about the whole process of putting a camera and we have a cliff behind us that yeah. is at the base of kind of a road that comes down and it empties in swamp. I call it a swamp. It's it's not big enough to be called an actual wetland kind of thing for uh, the Pennsylvania um, e EP, whatever, Pennsylvania Environmental Protection. Yeah, I, I, yeah I, I had asked them about cleaning it up and they made no contact with me. So I cleaned it up because it had been abandoned for a number of years and it actually empties out into the Schuylkill River. So like we're right across the road from us is a Schuylkill River. So I was thinking about putting a camera and maybe maybe you can help out, but on the cliff side facing the swamp area and then out to the river. We've had bear, I had bear scat like that big in my yard. I figure 450 pounder. Um, I've had tons of deer. Actually, the deer sleep in uh, one section of the swamp area. And then we um, what we think is coyote take off with, a, a, we're not sure because the carcass of the Canadian goose was completely gutted out, but the head was gone. But the, the goose was laying there and it was all the feathers and everything were there, but it was gutted. So we think it was a coyote. Um, we get a lot of, you know, activity there. I'd like to kind of capture some of that. Yeah. So I wasn't, sure, wasn't sure if that would be the best angle or if you think maybe going from the river up to the... Well, one thing you always got to look out for is where the sun is also. Because you, you rarely... Sometimes you're stuck, like with the log videos. It, it's just, I can't put it on the other side. So it's, the cameras are where they are. But when the sun comes up in the morning, I'm getting sun glare. But if okay. I can, if I, if I have a choice, I'll always go, you know, a, to where I'm not, I'm going to have the sun more behind the camera. Behind. Okay, good. Yeah, Thanks. Because, because yeah. it could uh, ruin a good picture or good video. Mm-hmm. So um, the angle is actually from the cliff to the river is east to west. If that okay. makes sense. Um, so my road is kind of north, south. Right. Or it's hard south. To, not actually I, being there or so, seeing. Hmm? Yeah. What? Without being without being there and seeing, it's kind of hard. But you know, the things I look for is obviously, like I said, how the sun is. So you kind of gotta. I I always have a compass with me, so I can take a compass reading it. You know, and can tell okay. on, on a cloudy day you got to anyway. Um, and it, it's kind of like uh, I'll set a camera up and walk it like how I think the wildlife's going to be then i'll check the video and see how it's turning out and sometimes I've, I've moved a camera to you know three different trees so i get the right angle or or what i feel is going to be good and, okay. and sometimes sometimes it's just setting it up and seeing what you get you might get a video of something and then realize oh it's going to be better if i'm over here you know but it's okay. sometimes it's just trial and error Okay, thank you. Sure. You can get uh, apps for your uh, phone yeah. that show you the uh, compass. I'm glitching in and out. But yeah. You can get all kinds of apps for your phone that has the uh, compass on it. And apps will show you where the sunrise is coming from and where the moon rise is coming from. All that yeah. kind of stuff. And they're sometimes useful. I look at them when I'm doing other kinds of videos as well for planning where the light's going to be for shots later on in the day. Right. 
I, I found that other video. You want me to play it? We have time. Sure. Oh. Now that you know how to do it, and yeah. it should work perfectly, right? All right. Now this is a brand new location. Cool. Do you see it? Yep. What's up? That is a brand new location. And again, this is a no glow, so you can see the light, but if you're there, you can't see the light. Um, and you can tell coyotes are very skittish, and it's not bothering them as much as if it was an actual light. The videos themselves play. You'll, you'll, you'll see a bobcat. You won't see it real quick. It's on the other side. It's coming. There it is. Sorry, Ed. The videos will play smoother <laughs> on YouTube than they do over the Zoom. So. <laughs> you can see the band on that goose's leg. The banded goose. And when, when I set that camera up, I set it on a trail that was there, but the only animal that actually walked on the trail I was looking for was that raccoon. Everything else was just walking around. What were some advice you could give people to tell them how to get started with the camera? You know, what, what should they look for in a camera and how, how to get started in this hobby? Um, I mean, you can get a camera about anywhere. Um, the quality is what you're paying for, better quality. Um, the Browning cameras I get, I order, and I get them delivered to the house for $200. It's, it's usually, they're always, every year, they're always right around $200 delivered to the house. It actually has a viewing screen, a little screen on it that helps when you're setting them up. Um, but that's also a lot of money for some people to see if they just want to get, try it out, 
So like I said, Walmart, different places, they, they all have inexpensive cameras. Um, and you can get wildlife just about anywhere. You know? uh, backyards, everything. Some of it we might not consider wildlife, but, you know, possums and skunks and everything else, they, they're, they're survivors. All right. We've had several new people join. Do you have any questions for Task Bob? Bob, what is what animal has most surprised you? Something that showed up on your screen that you weren't expecting or well when I was first I remember hiking with dad and we found the log, the original log. <clears throat> and I just, you know, you put a camera on it, thought, ah, you know, if I was looking to get across the stream without getting my feet wet, there's no other place to cross it, put a camera on. Went back after, I think it was a week, because we pretty much went every week, and there was like nothing on the camera, but left it out there another week. Came back the next week, there was a mother and three cubs. And I, that just totally surprised me, because I'm thinking of, you know, squirrels and chipmunks and stuff, you know, small things crossing it, have a, a mother and three cubs cross it, that just, that totally surprised me. Nice, cool. nice. Um, there was one time, it was just lucky, but there was a, a an owl and a turkey fighting just off camera <coughs> on the other side of the stream, but you could see the turkey kept almost like getting knocked out of the fight back to the log, and the turkey would run right back, and you have no idea what it, what's going on. You just keep seeing this turkey come flying out, and then go back in. And next thing you know, here comes this owl, flies right up across the, the log, and the turkey right behind him going, and the turkey ends up landing on the log. But yeah, that was kind of surprising. <laughs> that sounds interesting. I have a question, please. Yes. Um, Bob, have any of your uh, trail cameras been ripped off by an angry animal? I, I, I haven't lost any. I've had one bitten into. Um, I've had, I showed a video earlier, a coyote licking it, then took a little bite out of it. Uh, <clears throat> I've had bears mess with them but only one time a bear actually did damage. Um, I have had two cameras stolen that were by humans. So oh. they're the biggest problem I worry about. Thank you. Yep. See, Kathy's got her hand up. Do you um, ever get involved with the Pennsylvania Game Commission with anything? I've shared uh, videos to their site. I haven't done anything with them um, <clears throat> like we were talking earlier I, I work with the DCNR um, out of Black mm -hmm. Shan State Park but nothing with the game commission yet. but like I, I, I have posted videos onto their site and they like I have a friend who um, works for for them and um, he put a duck box up on on our swamp area and um, we got an owl in it. Oh. <laughs> we thought that, he, he went down and looked at it, and he said, that's a surprise, but it was a little owl. I, I forget what he called it, but it was no bigger than, like, my hand. It was very tiny. Um, but he... Well, you know, and it's funny you might say screech owl because the other night we were out back in the evening and I thought it was the red tails because we have red tails that are actually nesting on our cliff. And I thought maybe it was it, but it was already, you know, roosting time, well past roosting time. And it, this thing let out a curl, <laughs> a cry that so almost sounded like a hawk when they're flying around, you know, like right. they make that screech. And it almost sounded like that, but it was just a little bit different. We thought maybe it was, pan you know, like a panic for the, owl, uh, for the hawk. 
but then maybe it was a screech owl because that owl ended up hanging out at at our box. So right. who knows? Right. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. It makes me want to get a camera and put something out there to see what we're going to try and find. Yeah, you never know. You never know. I have friends that come by there and they say nine times out of ten, the deer are laying right in this one little grassy area right next to the swamp. So they know to look for them there. My mother and sister live up in Maine and we were up there a few years ago and my sister has a She's the birder of the family, um, and she has mm. a game camera that I'd actually sent her that was taking of just birds. Well, when me and Dad went up to visit, I forgot I didn't take a camera with me, but they have their backyard. There's a hill that goes down. There's a stream down there, so she let me use that camera, and I set it up. There's a log across the stream down there, and I just set it up on there, and it just took photos. But in just the one night we were there, we had. Uh, uh, I believe possum, I think raccoon, uh, a squirrel, a fisher was on it, mm. and a uh, turkey was on it. In the, in the yeah. morning, me and Dad were up in the morning, we heard a the, a turkey clucking, I think, or is clucking or a goblin, and I just figured it was, you know, but went down there, and about that time, there, there was a turkey on the log, so I call that the main log. <laughs> uh, it's to the part of it. That works out. Yeah. yeah. Thank you uh, for the information. Sure. Bob, what's been your most popular video? How many views have you gotten? Uh, well, I'd have to look at, I'd have to look them up. Um, there's well, a, off the top of your head. Yeah, the log, the main, the log video, you know, my original, the log um it's it's the the most popular uh in that series i have three of them log 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 two and log three but those are the most popular the owl fighting um it is definitely uh one of the big big the owl and the turkey fighting a lot of people like that Have you uh, ever set up a camera in a spot where you thought this is going to be good? This is going to be, I'm going to get something here. And then it just, for whatever reason, never panned out. Or are you that good where it always does pan out? I'm pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> now, there's, there's definitely times you don't get much. Uh, it's just every now and then you run into a circumstance, you get to check it leave it up there for a while and you know you pull it but uh nine chances out of ten they're, they're usually good areas i mean to, you know just like that one i just posted below the it's that i had, uh, was the first time the last video i just showed uh, below a beaver dam is what i call it because there's actually a beaver dam to the left and it was really just looking around there to see you know what was you know, it was an experimental spot and it turned out good, but they can just as well turn off not being good. But it seems like if it's a well-traveled trail, it's, it's good. Um, now, I've also put them just in the woods where just I'm walking through the woods and think, boy, this looks like a good area. And put the camera up and there's, you know, I've had bear, and deer, and turkey through it. Uh, had an owl fly right down through there coming in from behind to get that on video with something. What about people? Do you ever get people on your... I do, I do get people on it. Um, uh, usually people, some people look right at it. Some I don't think they notice it. The camera's camouflaged. Uh, if, if you're not really looking for it, you might not see it. But usually people are good. I, I've had, like I said, those two stolen. Um, and I had two guys on video like days before that that didn't look like your typical outdoors type of people and and they obviously were looking right at the one camera it was gone so i don't know if it was them but
Uh, at, at nine o'clock, we're going to play the uh, basics of wa wildlife trail cameras with Robert Bush Sr. Uh, that's another eight minutes. And so if you want to hang around and watch that, you're welcome to. Uh, let's play another one of uh, Bob's videos in the meantime to kill up a little time. How about his um, rough grouse drumming video? Are you playing that, Ed? Yeah, I'm going to play that. All right. Five minutes and 31 seconds. So. If you have questions, we can talk while the video is running as well. And this was quite a thing for me because I could hear him drumming all the time. And, uh, you know, always since I was young, you could always hear the grouse drumming. And I've looked and looked. And I see other people posting you know, videos of getting them drumming. And I was like, oh, my goodness. I knew where to look. And finally, I, I wasn't, didn't put this camera on this log. It was actually behind the grouse looking towards us because this is the ridge log. So it's right on a ridge line. And I, again, it just looked like a good spot. And that's where I got bear, and mink, weasel. I don't, maybe not mink, weasel. Mink are usually down by the water. Um, Fisher and, and other critters on there. And then one time there, he, he is drumming last fall in the middle of the night. Um, and then this spring, he started up again. I moved the camera to the front. And he just perches right there in front and drums. It's nice that you have these videos that you haven't edited them to look like something else. You know, like I, I see so many of the National Geographic kind of style videos where they've edited into like this adventure story. And I kind of like the feel of the raw videos. Yeah, this, yeah. this is what it's really like as opposed to something that's been so manipulated that you lose the essence of it. Let's, let's not knock editing now. <laughs> hey, I'm a filmmaker. Sorry, I, sorry, that that was just a joke. Sorry, <laughs> I'm a filmmaker. I I do editing. That's where the story comes together in the editing. But there's things that are uh, that and that's my like, and that's my brother. He is an editor also. So. Yeah. <laughs> well, it says a bush. So yeah. <laughs> so. Uh, that's where the yeah, story but, but I agree with you. It is nice to see some of them just in the long format. It, it's it's great. And it's and there was, there's enough editing in it. There is, you know, I like I said, there was 409 videos of this grouse drumming also, just like porcupine. So they weren't all right in the center. Some of the videos it was clean to the right. So you know. Um, and then there's times he's just sitting there. So it's like, what do you how do you do a video of of that you know so you're editing it down to just a drumming for the most part or any other little thing that might happen um so these what you see in this time period is the best of 409 videos i like that you um leave the, the sounds of nature in i saw a video recently of uh fall a loon on a lake in maine in this beautiful fall foliage and there was all kinds of classical music behind it to add drama. And I kind of felt like it took away from the natural sounds of, uh, of nature and the moment. So I like that you leave the nature sounds. The only thing I could think of, maybe there was a highway behind in like car sounds or something that they added music, but um, I felt like detracted it from it rather than added to it. So I appreciate that you leave mother, mother nature. Yeah, I love yeah. hearing that river. You have a little water running. It's nice. Yep, a lot of people. I get that comment a lot. Yeah, I don't. I don't like to put the music on it. Just 
soundtrack by Mother Nature. Do you ever get woodcocks anywhere? I haven't. I haven't. This is actually a rough grouse. Um, when it starts drumming, you can see its neck feathers get all ruffled, and that's where it gets its name from. Um, and that's the Pennsylvania State Bird, of course. Now, yeah, I haven't gotten any woodcock. I haven't seen those around. And the population of grouse in Pennsylvania is really was on the decline because of the West Nile virus. Um, it killed a lot of them. So I'm, I'm happy that we have a, this family around there. This is actually only like 200 yards from that nest that I said I put the camera on a couple years ago. Um, and it was neat watching the little ones hatch and um, go away. So they're, I'm sure the foxes and coyotes get some of them, but there's ones that live. Yeah, the uh, nest he put a camera on, that's one of the video clips that's featured in his upcoming video that will go be shown in just a minute here. So uh, I think I'll just go ahead and play it because it's uh, 8.58. It'll take a minute or two to get it up. And uh, 